Drogba indirici zana Snyder! Snyder gol! Merhaba and welcome to episode 72 of the Lions Den, a Galatasaray podcast. Done by the community, for the community. From all around the galaxy, I'm back, I'm back as your host, Samet. I'm back with the GOAT, the Oracle, the mobster, the what is he not. From New York, America, Emre, my boy, the best host of the Lions Den. I have to give it to him. Aww. Did a great job during my absence and always does a great job during my absence and i'm also here with yeah yasin <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so funny because i'm i'm like damn that's a crazy ass intro for emret there's no chance in hell he's gonna give me anything nearly as nice as that and maybe you're course, the oracle here you know, I consider it an improvement, Emre, because he didn't say Fenerbahce de Yasin, so I'll, I'll oh, take yeah. that for what it is. I was getting there. Little you steps, cut me baby off. Baby steps. Yeah, you cut me off, Yasin. Because a few episodes in, like when I wasn't there, there was nobody to really defend Galatasaray when you put out the bullshit that you're spewing sometimes. I don't know what you're talking about. Neither am I, but it's nice to <laughs> fuck around with you. <laughs> <laughs> I miss this. I miss this. Yeah. How are you lads doing? Doing good. Good. Doing man. good. Good. Um I I'm actually super curious to just right away get to know your experience because for the listeners who don't know, Summit was at the United game this week, as well as I no, actually what other game did you see Summit? You saw two games, didn't you? Yeah, I went to Alanya Spor and then went to Manchester United game indeed. Yeah, that was probably an insane experience. We'll talk about the game, but some you met with some of our listeners as well. I unless Emre has something else that he wants to start off with, that's what I want to hear about first. Tell tell us about your your couple of days there and how that experience was, if if you remember anything that is. I mean, in terms of meeting people, I'm I'm very social, right? I'm I'm good like to hang out with. And I have to say, like, this is how we met as well, right? I've had zero bad experiences meeting Galatasaray fans. It's just, they're all amazing people in general. Like, you guys are amazing. The guys I met are amazing. The listeners are amazing. Like, I've had zero negative vibes from anyone that was a Galatasaray supporter. Can't say that for other types of supporters. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I'm, I'm serious. Like, Well, you had a good experience with Yasin, right? And you call him a Fener supporter, so... That's yeah. a lie. <laughs> I, I knew. I, I thought someone might say something about that, but of Look, course, Emre. Yeah, Yasin is uh, is, is different, man. Yeah, I, I ha- yeah, I have to give it to him. Like when I hug this guy, he's all sweaty and shit. So uh, I don't know, oh, uh, bro. This guy. Can you give some context at least for the people who listen for the first time? <laughs> what do, you, do you really want me to give the context? This because guy. it was in bed right, when uh, I hugged you. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah, this. But this you were okay. saying. No, dude, that's fu- you can't just leave it at that. That's fucking weird, bro. It was, it was a day that we were in Istanbul for a few days, obviously, last year watching the game together. And this guy left super early. And it was it was during the winter, so it was cold outside, but the heat was blasting, I guess, in the, in the Airbnb. I woke up fucking hot as hell. I was sweating. And the first thing I did was hug this guy goodbye. And I guess that's what he fucking remembers of all things. And... I was sweaty when he hugged me, but... Yeah, yeah no, just, it was after the Barca game, right? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah so. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you have it. You're, there's your context. Anyway, okay, we're, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. We're all, we're everything friendly uh, community, everything friendly podcaster. Um, yeah. Where were we? What did you ask? You, you were saying something about explaining oh, yeah, no. everything. No, my wife found it re- weird at first, just meeting up with randos, but uh, she's quite used to it now. And funny story, uh, I went to the Alanya Sport and Manchester game with someone I met uh, during the celebrations against Fenerbahce. Uh, shout out to you, Javad. I know you're listening as well. Uh, basically, he's a schoolmate from 10 years, 12 years ago. 
that I like out of all places, uh, he recognized me in a breakfast joint in Istanbul. And we kept talking and that's where we decided, okay, yeah, well, I'm going, I'm going as well. Let's do it together. Um, let's go to the games. Um, yeah. So went with him, met up with a few listeners. Shout out to Lemon Alpaslan. was fun seeing you as the well. The GOAT. Indeed, indeed. Um, what else? Didn't also- you say that you uh, met an individual, a listener on the train or something like that, if I'm right. Yeah, correctly. so that's a, that's crazy. So the, here, you, okay, so we have a Twitter account. I usually post on there. And for our 1905th follower, I was like, I, I don't like doing these giveaways, but I just, I'm just going to show appreciation to followers. And 1905th follower was a great deal because, yeah, God's rise, um, year of start. So I messaged this guy, Kerem Alandar, and I said, you won. Uh, I'm going to send you a cap with 1905. I was like, oh, whoa. He was like, wow, out of nowhere, this happens to him, right? So he appreciated it, and he actually uh, donated the amount um, to a charity organization that would cost me. Um, sent it to him. He got it. Awesome, awesome. Kept in touch. And during the Manchester game, when I was going to the stands, I'm in Kuzey Alt. I have a season ticket there. I messaged him and said, hey, w- which stand are you in, actually? And he was like, ah, I'm in Gune, the other side. It's like, oh, that's sad, so we can't meet up or something like that. So I leave my phone. I go in the metro. I sit down with Jawad, and I look right n- next to me, and I see this dude. I was like, <laughs> Kedam? He's like, yeah, who the hell are you? Like, how do you know me? <laughs> I don't show my face a lot, right? On, on Twitter and stuff, but I do yeah. sometimes. And I was like, it's the lion's den. It's like, we just talked. I was like, holy shit, what the hell? <laughs> Out of all places, like, that's just insane. And I recognize his, his girlfriend as well, which Id Udul. And they're both the most amazing people. Uh, they, they, they were just discussing and saying like how they would listen in the car and they would stop uh, in the car and wait until the pod was finished. I was like, that gave me such good feelings as well to see that appreciation. And like, and, and also, like, what an amazing person this guy is. Like, it was just a random 1905th follower. Ends up being an amazing Galatasaray fan, having a season ticket at Gunei Alt, going to the games, and then seeing him there live. Yeah, no, it, it's, uh, I love bringing communities, people together, uh, and and to be able to do this, not on a large scale, even if it's just a small scale, to see people and, and make them happy, be happy as well. Um, yeah, shout out to all of you, man. Uh, we love you all. <laughs> yeah, no, that's an awesome, uh, awesome story. Yeah. Love it, bro. Love it. So, yeah, I, nothing else, I guess, uh, besides that stuff. Didn't you make a little cameo? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so that's the last story then. So Bilal Soydash, uh, it's a guy who I follow, a YouTuber who I follow for like since COVID times. He was doing videos of going to the stadium and shooting the atmosphere and sharing the atmosphere for all the games. So if you have not seen him, go to YouTube, type in his name, Bilal Soydash, and you'll see his amazing work. So. I got into touch with him as well, and yeah, uh, when I was at, I think the Alanya Sport game, we was talking to him. He was there. I was there in Kuzey Alt, and he came to me and said hi. Um, great guy, real genuine person, really loves Galatasaray, and the work he does is amazing as well. Anyway, he said, you know what? Yeah, come come watch with us the second half. So Alanya Sport game, I I went. And watch with with him and his crew. His crew is always also amazing. And uh, ended up in his videos, right? Uh, first at Alanya game and then Manchester. And then a few clips. So uh, if you watch it, you'll see like uh, we're cheering and all the emotions and everything. Which is awesome because now I get to look back at my experience in his videos as well. Aside from just like when I'm at home, it's still awesome because I get to feel that mm-hmm. emotion through his videos. And this time, <laughs> I was in his video. So, um, yeah, like I said, I don't like to go on a lot. Um, I find myself cringe when I'm on a camera. 
but uh, <laughs> especially because he was like the Manchester game. Yeah, you say some English words. I'm like, okay, uh, I, I, I throw some English words out there, and it's like just so cringe <laughs> because my Turkish is fine. We speak Turkish as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. No, mine is not good. Don't speak for me. We're gonna do the next episode horrible. in Turkish, uh, Emre. Oh, I won't be there, good sir. Nah, come on. <laughs> <Adi Odum. laughs> if, if we're going to do an episode in Turkish, I feel like we need to get like a big name Turkish analyst or something mm-hmm. on an episode like that. Maybe Ur. Fatih okay. Terim. Mm. Fatih oh, Terim, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. You, you have him on speed dial, Emre? Yeah, 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 I, I do. I, I, I can I'm going to ask Okan Hoca. Okay, okay. Yeah, we can do something. Yeah. We've got to prepare though. We need more time. Anyway, so yeah. yeah. What have you guys done when I, while I was gone? Do your job for you. That's what we did. Honestly, no, I'm just kidding. I'm yeah. kidding. Great episodes, lads. No, for I'm sure. glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, no, nah, yeah, no, we've been doing us. I mean, it's cold where we're at, and there's mm. not much to do. So, I mean, we can't just you know hop on a damn plane and you know in an hour we're gonna be in another country. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's not the same here. Sally an was hour. spot on last episode with the amount yeah, of yeah, hours yes, driving. Yes, we actually, yeah, yeah, we looked it up. It literally takes you to Serbia in like yeah. 19 hours. Yeah, he's the geographic uh, cunt, right? <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> A geolocator, whatever the yeah, guy is. whatever he does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too bad he's that. The man on. should be working for the FBI, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy. Historian, geographic dude, whatever. Um, yeah, so good stuff, lads. Good stuff. Um, yeah, no, so not much really. So I guess we can get into the games unless you guys have anything else that are, that is interesting. (sighs) Yes, I don't don't think so. I I, I don't think there is any new news. Uh, There's, there's going to be a lot of news in the next couple of weeks with the transfer window coming up. But in the meantime, it's kind of like a quiet storm, just kind of getting through these games. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's been hectic. It's kind of nice that there is no crazy news, so the guys are concentrated. At least you would hope so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you know uh, why? Because all the birds are quiet. And you know why they're so quiet? <laughs> of course. That's that. That's that's news right there. Actually, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, yeah, you, exactly. You, talk, you you talk about it ever since you brought it up. Oh, I get the honors. Great. Yeah. So after our three three, you know, draw against Manchester United, you know. The team that everyone in Turkey thinks they can beat other than us, right? So they, the day after that we played, Besiktas goes and concedes five goals from Club Brugge. <laughs> they made That's a record. How you pre- yes, a record. Until. And, until, until our, our, our uh, Fenerbahce, you know, broke friends. Broke that record. <laughs> broke that record with a 6-1 defeat to Norseland. I, I probably screwed the name. Sorry to all my Danish listeners. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 6 1. That's like one of their heaviest defeats. So, Emre, what do we say to that? <laughs> Galatasaray is global, my friend. <laughs> yeah, no. But that's crazy. It's, it's insane, man, because to your point, we tied United 3 3, and there were, there were fans of uh, these other clubs, Fanabach and Bishkitash, saying, oh, like, you three three like that's the best you guys can do. We can score five against them. That that there was a saying like that. Like oh, find about your best shot, Manchester United. Uh, yeah, we oh, saw. We'll be we Bayern. Saw, mm-hmm, we saw, sure. We we saw what happened. Like it's it's surprising and it's not surprising. Again, you would think that Besiktas and Fenerbahce this season in Europe, being in the Conference League in the group stages that they are in, that they would be able to kind of carry the coefficient of this league forward to the spot where it really should be. Meanwhile, it seems to be the opposite. We're in the most difficult group, you know, compared to them. And we're actually getting results uh, against very difficult teams. And they're here losing 5 nothing at home to Club Bruges and 6-1 away. And they're ex- they have excuses as well, Utan Maldan. You know, we have injuries, this, that. It doesn't matter if you have injuries. You're playing against teams that are... You know, not even top three or four in their domestic leagues, which should not be comparable to the squad and size of the teams that we have. So, I don't know. Uh, once again, Galsai showing the difference between mm-hmm. them and everybody else in this league. So, props yeah. to us. Yeah, yeah. How did you feel after the 6-1 defeat, uh, Yasin? 
<laughs> you know, it's it's funny because I was actually not aware of that game going on. Like I knew the game was going on, but I was not keeping track of it. I wasn't near my phone. I forget what I was doing. I think I was working. It was during the mm-hmm. weekday, obviously. Mm-hmm. I had meetings and shit like that. Um I, I looked early in the game. I think they were losing like two one or some shit like that. I'm mm-hmm. like, ah. Oh. Like they'll they'll definitely turn this game around as as usual. They probably didn't take them seriously and whatnot. Yeah. And I I come back later and the ch- the chat went off. I'm like I got tagged like two times from John. I'm the, like what the, the fuck's going on here? Eric yeah. Benjamin Nigran. His celebration. He came in as a substitute, scored a goal, celebrated with the classic Mauro Icardi. And he hand, does it two more times. After hands that. behind the ears and does it two more times. A hat trick and all three celebrations are a. Uh, well, the, the devotion to Maro Icardi, basically. And, and, and you know what's funny? His teammate the day after on Instagram actually posts a gif of Maro Icardi. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, so yeah. it's like, it's definitely a thing. Everybody just shuts the birds up, like, immediately. First they say, oh, we'll score this, and then they get this, and then they'll be like, oh, no, it wasn't the Maro Icardi uh, celebration. He did it before or something like that. And then his mate confirms that it's Icardi, so... It's like everyone shuts them up immediately. Like, how sad. Like, oh my God, I feel for them. Like, I'm not even happy anymore. Anyway, enough about them. Do you guys remember my Champions League draw simulator? Yes. So it was spot on. Bayern, Manchester, Copenhagen, Gala. And I said, I don't fear anyone more than these Scandinavian teams. And what do we have? It's the final game that we need to win. Yeah. I don't know about that game, bro. We could talk yeah. about it towards the end, but yeah. I am really concerned about that game. Yeah, let's let, let's do that indeed. If there's no other new, nah. more news, nah. then uh, so, let's slowly yeah, let's go get to, into the, Manchester the United game. Gay. Mm-hmm. United Gay? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, they are gay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, who wants to do it? Well, Garnacho, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what he is, man. He's like a Jeffrey Star or what's it called? The other I don't know, one? because Ziyech took it very personally. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. like to thank Garnacho for uh, going so, off in that game. Yeah. So, Otherwise, I don't know. If, uh-huh. Go ahead. Galatasaray versus Manchester United. Um, well, obviously, I went with the subway, uh, came there, and everyone had on their seats these um well communication papers about what we will have to do there were yellow black white um papers that we had to hold up and it basically Mm -hmm. gave um well instructions on what to do when to do it so before we start the first 11 hype anything was not there because of this new announcer i just want to make that clear there is a new announcer the old announcer had some family issues and had to go, and it makes such a big difference. We noticed at the Alanya game, uh, the new announcer was saying, like, uh, Dries Martens, uh, Nelson Viking, like, weird, n- like, incorrect, incorrect names. And That's so unprofessional, man. It's like, sick. Is, you know is, what is the it... problem is, Yasin? The thing is, I hear that they're not being paid well, so they don't stay long. They have, like, like no incentive to do this job because they get paid peanuts, apparently. This is what I hear. Listen, yeah. that, that might be true, but it's not an excuse for me to not say the correct names the right way. You know, fans are used to the announcer saying the names and everything a certain way all the time. There, there needs to be consistency. There needs to be, like, the guy that's leaving... You know, even if maybe he, you know, you said he has family issues, so he doesn't have time to teach the next guy what to do. There should be a liaison at the club that's going to tell the new guy, look, when Martin scores, you say this. When Icardi scores, you say this. Have some energy. Galatasaray is the biggest club in Turkey. Lots of fans in that stadium would love to have that opportunity to be that announcer. And even if it does pay peanuts, you tell me you can't find a guy that has a decent, exciting voice to just announce these these call-outs during the game once a week. Like, come on. We we need to do better, like, in, in this regard. 
because someone I'm sure has more to say about it, but from my understanding, the guy, it's not in day difference between what the guy was doing before and what the new guy is doing. Look, that- I didn't know it could impact an atmosphere so much because this game against Manchester United, he didn't even call up the first 11. Like how crazy. That's really? how you get in the vibes, bro. That's how we get into the game and into the atmosphere. And he didn't even call up the first 11. Like insane. Maybe he was like never like an announcer to begin with. He's just some guy that they found. Can you just like, bro, can you do us a solid and just like yeah, do this job? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's unacceptable. But yeah. Hey, what do you do, man? We can uh, we can connect with uh, I don't know. We can connect with um, with the stadium and and do it ourselves. I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind doing it. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> bro. Emily, like yeah. you, Summit, so many fans would love to do that, and they would do it to the T of how it should be done. Mm. And this is the guy that they find. Oh, offense to the guy, but like. But if no you can't offense. do the job properly. To be then... devil's advocate, Yasin. Yeah. Your main guy who's amazing um, has to leave for a family issue. And the whole club is searching for a guy that can take over. They push the mic into your hands. You have zero experience. And people are shitting on you because you are just trying to do your best. I mean, it sucks that he didn't do the first 11, but couldn't they find this other person? But anyway, yeah, that's how probably how the guy feels. Like, he's probably... Maybe. <laughs> Could be. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, I've tried Jesus. to justify it, but even my trying to justify it, I was still like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just find someone. someone tell, so, yeah. tell, tell us about that choreography, bro. Like being there, seeing Mate, it in I person. I had no clue. Mate, I had no clue. <laughs> when you do choreographies, you're lifting a piece of paper and you don't know what. It might as well be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and you have no clue what you're lifting up. Like, And then I, I checked like the little peak I could get and I saw the <laughs> cup uh, at Pune. The trophy. Like, okay, on the other side. trophy. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Like, I was like, what do we have? <laughs> <laughs> you don't see it. And then they show it on the screens, right? So I was like, oh, awesome. Ours is a lion. Looks, looks better. <laughs> and then the text changed in the stands as well from um, yeah, this bro. is Samian to welcome to hell. Welcome so to like, hell. Amazing. That was sick. That With was the Champions sick. League music. Oh, God. Yeah, dude. That's incredible, man. Yeah. It made headlines as it well. Did? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it mentioned in um, a lot of like English Twitter pages and stuff. Of Maybe course. even on the news. Even Rio Ferdinand. He's like, someone asked him, have you been to Istanbul before? Have you experienced this? And he said, yeah, well, I've been to Istanbul, Fenerbahce, Besiktas, but never experienced something like this. This is just the best. And like everyone acknowledged, should acknowledge, we are the best. That's it. Ferdinand was pretty damn biased though. Like was, crazy. What did he say? Yeah, yeah. Oh, United should do this. United should do that. Uh, in general, you know what, what I mean? What, what, like, okay, let me just quickly sell, say the first 11. Uh, Fernando Mislera as usual, Sasha Bowie on the right, Khan Ayhan, surprisingly, uh, after Davinson Sanchez was called injured, Bardakche as usual, Angelino on the left, Lucas Torreira and Endombele in the midfield, Hakim Ziyech on the right, Mertens, and then left, Zaha, and then Icardi. So, very surprising first 11, right? Like, what's the most surprising there for you? There's a few. Um, probably Ndombele starting. I, mm-hmm. Ndombele starting and Nelson not starting. I actually thought that Kanai Hunt would remain in this center midfield role next to Torreira. Mm-hmm. And we would finally see Nelson in that center defense. Yeah, because yeah. You, think, you think the pecking order is Sanchez, Bardakche, Nelson and then Khan Ihan. And you think that Khan Ihan's better role is the center midfield. You know that Ndombele is not the paciest player, the most, you know, aggressive player in the midfield in terms of covering distance. Knowing all this, that was a huge shock to me. And then finally, obviously, the big another big shock was Kedem not starting and Mertens remaining in his role at as starting number 10. Uh, we had a discussion about this last time on the pod, back and yeah, forth. Yeah, I said that Kedem would start, and to my surprise, he didn't start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
But yeah. what did I say, Yasin? I said that we shouldn't change up the lineup based on the Alanya game, right? I was like, mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't trust this to be a good, like, you know, showcase for us. That's why I didn't really think Meritons needed to start. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. And the game kind of like showed that because the first half was kind of bad in our name. Like the game we played against Manchester away, the two Bayern games, this was probably one of the worst games we played in Europe so far, I would say. Barring like that 20, 25 minute, uh, like that, that, that sequence against Copenhagen. Like, this was our worst game, if you ask me, even though we made it 3-3. But, yeah, no, I I thought Kedam and at least Nelson would start. And I think that was a mistake, and everyone agrees on that. But, yeah, go. Continue. No, that's that's that. Uh, what, what was the vibe at the stadium summit? Because I know when you're there, you everybody's tempted to look at the phone and discuss with the person next to them what they think of the lineup. I'm sure a lot of people were surprised there as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Definitely a surprise for Nelson decision, M. Dombele decision. And also happiness for seeing Mertens instead of Karim. Uh, so those were the main uh, vibes I could catch. But personally, mm-hmm. I think Okan Buruk is making, giving a message to Nelson. We all know, and this is my opinion, all right? We all know Nelson has been a bit off lately. And with off, I don't only mean on the pitch, but also off the pitch, off. Because he's been saying some nah, not nice things. And I think this is giving a message to Nelson into saying, look, I'm, we made you. And we can just finish you just like that. So get your head together and don't be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I'm sure he said that. <laughs> I'm not saying he said that, but that's the only thing I can think of in terms of why we, you would choose Khan Ihan over a real center back. Because I think he got like um, persuaded by the game we played against Alanya, which I th- really thought that he would like come to his senses and think, yeah, this These is Alanya, games lads. These are not measurements. Alanya sport, that's what I'm saying. Pendic sport that's what are I'm not s- measurements. Yes, that's These what I'm saying. Not- that- like, whatever you mm-hmm. test, it will be successful against these That's why teams. I was so against people starting Mertens because, like, I've seen Mertens against big teams and they brought up the Manchester United game away. But again, that was him coming in in the second half when United were tired. And you saw from this game, uh, in the United game at home, he was kind of invisible. Like, do you guys remember anything he did that was, you know, impactful to the game? I don't remember much. I think, you know... It also has to do with the fact that we played against a much stronger and active midfield that United has. And and Dombele, how much of a good job did he do against such a strong midfield like that? Did Mertens have to maybe contribute a little bit more in the help and, you know, the, the back midfield line next to Torreira and Dombele because of it? Did it maybe hinder how much he can contribute in the attack because of that? You know, th- that's, that's stuff a good that point. You, that's stuff you have to think about as well. And again, you 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 hit the nail on the head. One, two games, especially against Alanya Spor, and then switching to United. These are very small sample sizes, so it's still very tough to be able to make a conclusion where you feel very confident about it. But yeah, um, like why would you switch with the the working formula, bro? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's one thing I didn't like. I wasn't happy, but I think he might have done it so he can shut people up. Like ah ah, yap them. Okay, you happy? Ah, nold. Like, that's like what he did, basically. <laughs> well, Angelino was terrible. Well, I actually, I think for me, that was the main thing. Angelino, I really didn't like seeing him. Also, like the whole stadium, it was insane. It's nothing unlike I've seen anything. I before. was going to ask you, bro. Like, they were after we could see the first two goals. Change sign. Mm. Change Angelino. That was like, everyone was like with their hands, making circles. Yeah. It was insane. I, I saw that on Bilal's video, bro. I, yeah. Emre, did you notice that on TV? Because I didn't. I did not. I did not. And then watching that video, I think Bilal pointed it out at first, and then he he changed the clip to you, and you were pointing it out as well. <laughs> it was super obvious. Everybody in the stands was to your point, mm-hmm. you know, circling their fists around each other, like Hoja, make a change, make a change. That to me is crazy. That really shows that the fans are on 
a collective agreement that maybe Hoja needs to make some changes quicker. Mm-hmm. I was listening to some fan conversations after the game as well. They're saying, look, you know, we need to make changes quicker. Hoja, everybody sees it. People watching from TV sees it. People at the stands sees it. Why is Hoja not seeing and making these changes in time? Um, that's definitely something to look out for as we go forward, uh, unfortunately. It's um, like... You got sometimes the people got to remember you can't just make a switch out of the blue instantly. Like you got to like wait a little bit too, right? See how the game goes. I mean, Angelino was not our biggest issue if you ask me. Uh, maybe unpopular opinion, he was bad, but I don't think he was the worst. I think Endombelli really screwed our game plan no, I because think he was how fine, many times in my opinion. Who Angelino or Endombelli? I think the main issue was Kanaihan if you ask me. Well, in mid- okay, their first goal, for example, well, Endon Bele couldn't win a fucking uh, um, air ball against what, what was it, Bruno Fernandes? I forgot who it was, bro, but he yeah. had like all the momentum and then they just got the ball and went straight, straight to our box. Like, mm-hmm. come on, bro. And that happened multiple times in the game. Yeah. Whereas I think Khan Haihan would have been much better. I That's the whole thing. That's why I say Khan Haihan because center back, if we had Nelson, Khan could go in the mid instead of Tangu and Dombele. And we'd have the double fit pivot we used for all our games in the Champions League, basically. Um, I know. So changing it made our midfield a bit more soft. Khan has that strength as well there. So against Bruno Fernandes, I'm sure it would have been better on top of Nelson. Because what we saw, both goals came from the left side, from Sasha's side, um, from the corner of Khan Ayhan. Having Nelson there as a real center back would have made a difference. I'm telling you, it would have definitely. No, I agree. Yeah, like don't change the winning formula, man. Like you've done fine with these two center backs before, Nelson and Apo. Mm-hmm. Don't change. Apo made some bad mistakes too in the game. I don't know. People say like the third goal, especially. That yeah. was all. That was all his mistake. It actually really pissed right. me off too. Like, what are you doing attacking? Like pressing that high. I like the yeah. fact that our defenders like to press high that's how Okan likes our defenders playing as well but when but you when go overboard yeah bro there was such a huge gap between Aldo <laughs> Kerim and that player like you already know you don't have pace if you if you don't win that ball there we are screwed and that's what happened people blamed Angelino like who were you marking in that last position but he did what he's supposed to do he's supposed to show one way you know try and defend two players at the same time maybe confuse the guy with the ball Unfortunately, these United players are very qual- like they're good quality players. They're not gonna, they're not gonna make the mistake of not taking advantage of that position, and that's what they did. So yeah, you know what pissed me off about Apo the most this game? Are you talking about Bro. the McTominay goal? Yeah, that's what yeah. I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, you remember that whole Carambo position where Torreira got fouled, and then it was a handball the ref didn't give. Who was on, again? Terrible this game. If up to Kerem stayed in the box instead of running towards the referee, he would have actually scored a goal. But instead of like staying and going to complain to the ref, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There you go. You know, True. we couldn't score, bro. What is with our Turkish players? I think they're just too used to the Turkish league where, like, if you do not run mm-hmm. to the ref immediately and complain, yeah, you're not gonna get, um, VAR check or anything. Fully agree. That's, like, that's the only reason. I mean, that but got to be it. That's got to be it. It's like, bro, it, you running to the ref and just complaining to him, is it going to make him, you know, okay, man, I, I'm going to go check it. Don't worry. I got you. All right. Mm-hmm. No. If there's something to be checked, they will check it. Finish the game, bro. Mm-hmm. And he does this so many times. Yeah. Like, he wants to be the captain or something. I don't know, man. Just that but, really annoyed the hell out of me. Uh, so... First half, um, Manchester scored two goals, right? The first one was Alejandro Garnacho. Uh, the guy, the girl, I don't know what he is. Anyway, <laughs> what I do know he is, a big major cunt, because when he scored that goal, he came towards us, and he, he basically put his hands and did like a almost like a drug bar version and to quiet down to say quiet down and that made everyone go nuts and i was like thinking at that moment good do this you bastard do this because you're gonna roll up the whole stadium 
Looking now at it, the, the whole stadium, mm-hmm. he pissed the hell out of ZH. You guys see that ZH look? It was yeah. all over the all over yeah. media, bro. He yeah. gave him the worst stare down. Yeah, like, oh, you want to do that? I got you, bro. He's like, I got you. You wait, you wait and see. And, exactly, Sonic just did him right. Like, I know. and then proceeds to uh, turn the whole game by himself. Thanks. So, Garnacho goat. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, so, no, yeah. Not much we could do really. Uh Khan Ihan could have done better at that goal, but the second goal, Bruno Fernandez, that was a beauty, man. That was a that was a banger, bro. There's mm. literally nothing you can do. I decide, you know, maybe mark him down, not give him a free, you know, shot at goal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah. happened right in front of you guys, right? Summit. <laughs> yeah, side. unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Both goals, man. But you know, I saw like uh, a lot of goals. <laughs> Six in total, so it's fine. You had the best seat for Kerem's goal. Yeah, Oof. bro. Great, 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 great. Great control, great shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that the goals, for, our goals, bro, we had such a low XG for right, our goals. Dude, you're that... jumping around goals, dude. Like, <laughs> in order, please, Emre. Because after the 2 0 of Manchester, we had Zie. I so mean, the... I did mention Zie. Zie. The real, the real man of the match was uh, Onana. We have to admit, right? Yeah, I think it's over exaggerated, bro. The second goal, <laughs> yes, but the first goal, nah. That was just good play from us and like poor, um, like bur- like man. What the fuck? The word I'm thinking of, the I'm line. Te- I'm telling you, thank God Ten Hag knows Onana from Ajax, and he's so persistent on him <laughs> because Altai would have done a much better job. Yeah, you cannot be worse than Ronana right now. Like, it's I don't insane. get how you can be so bad. Last year, he was like one of the best keepers. This year, is like, what? Curse of De Gea or something, bro? What is going on? Yeah. Like, he's making Ona- um, De Gea look like a god keeper right now. So, two free kick goals from Ziyech and one from Kerem. <laughs> the, the amazing goal that you just mentioned, Emram. Yes. What about him? No, nothing. What did you think of Kerem's attitude towards the fans? I don't I don't know. Like I think he was bro, you could tell this kid is frustrated. He he's clearly frustrated because like I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing my best and I'm still getting the most criticism of anybody on the team. Right? So mm-hmm. like I I I understand where he's coming from. But again, you got to keep your head high and just try your best. Because it happens to everybody, everybody. When you are, when everyone looks to you for goals, you're going to get the most criticism. Like, like, Cardi starting to get some criticism. Like, because, like, this last game we, he played, he was, like, basically invisible. Mm-hmm. Right? What, what do you so, think, Yasin, of Kerem attitude? I mean, some people... <laughs> express disappointment with it saying that he's you know facing up to the fans i didn't look at it that way i i thought it was pretty well contained he he expressed a message but i didn't understand it as a message to all fans there in that moment i understood it as like to all my doubters like yeah here here is what i just did this is for you this is to you Mm-hmm. Like he didn't, he didn't raise his hands. He didn't wave his hands. Like you know, you know the classic Turkish way that when people get mad, you know they they raise their hand up. Like oh, what's up, right? Like he didn't do any of that bullshit. Or put he his just, hand to his ears. You know, like yeah, I can't hear you guys anymore. Whatever. Exactly. I found it respectful. I I I, I appreciate that he actually got a message across. Like. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you could you could argue saying Yasin, like if he scored the goal, that's enough to shut the doubters up. No, it's not. Because he he scores goals, he makes assists, and people still have things to say about him. And as fans, we have every right to say what we want to say. You know, if we want to criticize him, it's not like we criticize him because he's Turkish or because his name is Kerem. We criticize him because we think he could do better, or he's made a lot of mistakes that have cost us points in recent times. We we criticize him on the podcast, right? But it, I think it has been excessive. And to Emma's point, the the kid has it more than anybody else, and I and I do feel bad every time I criticize him myself. I do feel bad because what he has done for this club uh, is 
extraordinary. You know, we we got him from the third league for basically free, and he has he got punched by Marcao two years ago in front of everybody. <laughs> like he has gone through a lot, mm. and. I think his mentality is actually like admirable in a way. You I know, like the he, way you put it. Because the he, other side of this is, oh, he should be grateful of Galatasaray. He has such a big attitude. It's not good. Um, especially he, nobody is bigger than Galatasaray or the fans. He should not do this. But the way you put it is so good. Like, I think it's an eye-opener for people that think this way. And, and, and I appreciate that, Yasin. Yeah. And I think Okan Buruk made a good point to the fans too. It's like, all right, can you guys please stop talking about Keta? You know, yeah. when he's not playing, we have a pretty hard time opening up defenses. Yeah. And you can see how active he is and he creates positions. But then here we have you guys on the last podcast. Hey, John, where's John at? I want to speak to John and his shitting on Keta take. <sighs> Listen, I... I'm here, even though John is not. I still am on the fence of like his positioning. You should not play on, number ten. His positioning on the field is, especially at number ten, is not it. You know, we it's just not. And I don't, I don't want to regurgitate where everything we talked about for many, many episodes now. But that's just not where he excels. And I thought all of us did a really good job on the last episode describing why. You know, number ten is. Is how he plays, whoever number 10 is, affects how everybody else around him plays as well. And when you're trying to score goals, when you're a team like Osai who counts on your offense because of the pure domination and skill difference between the players on the pitch, offense is where you shine. When Galatasaray plays against teams like, you know, Alanya Sport, Pendik Sport, any team in the Turkish League, you don't necessarily go and praise your defense because they're oftentimes more quiet. You praise your offense. And if your number 10 stops your offense from playing the way that they should, that person's going to get criticism. Rightfully so. So uh, we, we, we saw him work really well on the wing for the last couple of seasons. That's where he needs to stay. Um that's all I can really say about that. Well, I don't know what Zaha thinks about that, but yeah. yeah. Zaha, I think, really appreciated having Martins at number 10 last week. We, we, we talked about the, uh, the heat map mm-hmm. and how much space Martins allowed Zaha to have on the left side. Did you think Icardi... that translated to Manchester game? <sighs> Not necessarily, only because Manchester is a much more disciplined team compared to Alani Spor and any other <laughs> Turkish league team. Um, also because as I mentioned before the midfield of Manchester United is just much 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 better uh, Martins was not allowed to do what he did against Alanya Sport in terms of positioning and uh, opportunity creating because Ndombele I think was a weakness in the midfield a clear weakness um, and <laughs> I'm kind of jumping around too now but we talked about Bardakçı and mm-hmm. how he unnecessarily pushed up to midfield for press who who was playing in front of Bardakçı? Throughout Ndombele. The, Ndombele. Mm. It, because Ndombele was not in his position, pressing where he needs to, marking his man like he needs to, Bardakçı made a mistake because of it. You know, again, it's Bardakçı's fault, but you have to think about the grand scheme of it as well. This is why I always mention the players around you is really indicative of how you can or cannot play as well. So this applies to your midfield too. Lucas Torreira, this applies to Ndombele. So hopefully Hoja, I'm sure, is seeing all this as well. Um, I'm curious how this is going to work out for Ndombele in his future at uh, Galatasaray. For the I next don't think he stays, months. honestly. It's kind of so sad either. when when Sergio Oliveira, the guy who I criticize the most, comes in and does better than you. It's, it's, it's kind of telling that you're not going to stay along with Angelino. I think both of them will be sent in some yeah. fashion. And let Both me of them ask are loanies anyway. Exactly. Let me ask you guys this, right? And don't believe six months so far, right? Six of the 12 months that we have a month loan. Has he shown any indication that he is a player that can play consistently? No. Not really. Has I mean, he, I see improvement, but like not enough in the time that he's been given. Exactly. Uh, is it a player that you can count on? Let's say he plays well for the next six months. Can you count on him? Let's say we sign him on a three or four year deal. Can you count on him being consistent 
for the next three, four years? No. I say no, exactly. And on top of that, the last piece is, is he a player that you can comfortably spend $15 million on? Absolutely no. Absolutely not. You can maybe negotiate that down with Tottenham. Say, look. Uh, yeah, free, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Even then, his wages are... I don't even know what they are going to be if we sign him full-time, but they're going to be too damn high for what he provides. We saw... We see Khan Ihan and what he provides. The, the Yabanju Kurala, the foreigner limit, is not changing from any indication that we've seen so far. So that, that's not a risk that you really take. Yes, um, and the only yeah. reason we have Ndombele is because we couldn't get someone else, and then they use Ndombele as a, a uh, compensation for not getting anyone because what Okan Buruk mm-hmm. was what I hear wants someone like Paradise wants someone like Vicino someone that Fred. can hold that midfield Double Fred digit. yeah yeah who can hold that midfield and let Torreira be the man that plays eight along with a number 10 we pay him 3.1 million for this season too much yeah too much sometimes yeah, like you, no yeah sometimes you pay a lot of money for a player and wages and even if they're consistent, they win you a couple games and you say it was worth it. Example, Tete. The kid has still has still has to prove himself, honestly. He gets paid a lot for what he does. Um, which you know, the, the ratio is not quite right. But he won us a couple games. Uh, I think one or two. Yeah, he, he got us points against Copenhagen in, in the clutch in the last minute. Uh, other games as well. Zaha, he started off rough. But he has definitely won as many points so far. Important games as well. And he's finding his groove. You see the passion mm-hmm. from Zaha on the pitch. You know, every every person doesn't necessarily, every player doesn't necessarily have to play with the same passion that Zaha does. But in comparison, look at um, Ziyech. Ziyech is one cold-ass motherfucker, bro. The, the dude does not show an ounce of the passion Zaha does in terms of like aggression. But you see that he's interested. You see him really getting finding his groove lately. He he loves the game. And Dombele, and Dombele is cleaning his teeth before the game starts. Like that's that's what Ndombele is doing. I, I hate to be over exaggerately getting the burgers you know, up. criticism of him, but come on, man. Like you have this skill. We're just we sound like Tottenham fans now. Like, oh yeah, he's really skilled, but he doesn't show it. Like mm-hmm. I hate to I hate it even after he comes to Florida. He still is like this. If, if the Florida water is not going to fix him, I don't know what is. He's I, allergic to the uh, Florida water. It's not going to work for so. him. Seems but the so, thing, man. he's he's not drinking his two liter a day Florida water. I think he's just doing like 250 ml. <laughs> That's the problem. He needs to drink at least two liters. That's the regimen. He, he's one of those people who eat more than they drink. More than they yeah. drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. This game, we also had two important decisions. The referee is Spanish. Um, previously, we were effed over by a Portuguese one. So <laughs> now it's a Spanish dude that, what did he not do? He didn't give the offside, well, according to him, offside goal of Icardi. So we didn't get to sink Ashkemolayim in the stadium, unfortunately. And uh, there was another position. Oh, yeah, a penalty. Also not given. I think was it McTominay or uh, Lindelof or Maguire? I don't know. I think it was McTominay. Yeah. What do you guys think of that? Let's start. It's a the penalty, penalty, if yeah. you ask me. Clear and simple. It's a penalty. Yo, you extended your arms, bro, and prov- like, I think that might have gone in. And also, they didn't show, but like Onana kind of screwed over Torreira too. That could have been a penalty, but everyone just glanced over that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. It's like they really want United to be second place. I know it's like a conspiracy theory almost, but (laughs) goddamn, bro. Almost. (laughs) Yeah. But almost because like, bro, what is this? Like two games back to back? By neighboring countries too? Especially the VAR and the technology they used drawing a wall digitally. To see that what? Yeah, apparently VAR wasn't working in the Bayern game for Harry Kane's goal. Yeah. What? what? Yeah, that's what I heard. That's crazy. So, yeah, there's still things being messed up. And 
I don't know how to feel about this technology. <laughs> I thought it was good, but then again, like, <laughs> how do you? Screws you. <laughs> how do what? When it screws you, you don't like it, right? <laughs> no, no. It's like it made me think. <laughs> Now it made me think. Like, how do you decide when the ball leaves the foot? Like, what are the millimeters? And like, how do they do that? Like, I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a proposal. I don't know who it was, but like, if it's within a certain distance, mm -hmm. even if it's off sides, they're Margin. gonna count it because, yeah, like mm -hmm. it, that will be this, abused, this, bro. That will be abused. No, don't bring that. Then Fenerbahce will have all their offside goals counted. <laughs> exactly. No, yeah. bad idea. Then yeah. we'll be discussing what is this margin? Five percent? Ten percent? Twenty-five percent? A leg? A foot? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's always so be an I, issue. I I no, don't bring that. Anyway, even with well, yeah. those two bad calls, we still managed to get a an important That's one important, point. right? Yeah. That's the important part. We came back from 3-1. That's like a big team reflex I'm, right amazing. there. Amazing. Amazing how we keep coming back. Came um, back from 3-1 and 2 nothing. Am I right? It was 2 nothing exactly. at one point. That, that it, it seems to be a theme, you know. That's what I really like about Galsai this year. Um, actually, last two years. It's not Historically, over. when we fall behind, it seems like it's it was game like over. a wrap, bro. It was, used to be a wrap. Four nil, five nil. Yeah. Now again, we, it was we, no, it was no Norseland or Club Bruja, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it would be Bayern. Not it would be like Madrid or PSG or something. I know. Now the belief is there. Copenhagen two nothing and two two could have made it three two. Right, the first the first game Manchester United. We were behind two, three times, I think, and that that finished a win. No, it was two times, right? Um, so huge props to Okamburuk, the team, and our captains on the pitch that really instill that belief that even if we do fall behind, we can still catch up and win. So that's that's great to see. Yeah, hundred percent. Should we get into the Pendic game, boys? I want to talk about like what this one point means for us as well. Yeah. Because if we didn't get this one point, what would it mean that we didn't have things in our control, right? With mm -hmm. this one point, everything is now in our hands. We only have to win against Copenhagen. If, only have to win. Let's put it this way. If you saw this group, Bayern, United, Copenhagen, and I told you in the beginning, here's an offer for you. You only have to win Copenhagen and then you get out of this group. Would you take it? Absolutely. I guess. I'm not saying you need to win Bayern. I'm not saying you need to win United. I'm saying wh whoever, everyone was like, okay, Copenhagen is the worst team out of this thing. So I'm saying now, win Copenhagen and you're out of the groups. That, that's amazing. That's great, right? That, that, that's, that's a huge point. That's a great perspective, honestly. Uh, Let's just not glance over the fact that uh, Copenhagen tied Bayern away, okay? So their defense is pretty good. All right, you can argue Bayern didn't put out their best XI, but it's still Bayern. Their best XI still is worth like five times what Copenhagen is worth, and they couldn't find many positions. And mm -hmm. now think that we have to go on their turf and have to open them up because you know they're going to be parking the bus like crazy. And well, we kind of have a hard time opening up t uh, defenses. We didn't do bad against Bayern's first 11 either. I mean, played 20 games against Bayern. They don't play the same as Copenhagen, though. They play a different game. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, I agree with him. I think Copenhagen is going to go into that game saying a tie is enough. And we saw the first leg, how, how disciplined they really are defensively. And again, we struggle against teams that sit back. It's going to be a balancing act. I, I don't know if Okamburuk is going to approach this game, maybe allowing them to attack a little bit more and count on our defense to be disciplined and clear what we need to clear so we can attack on the counters with maybe Keram or Zaha. Or if we're going to straight up say, okay, you want to sit back, we'll, we'll attack and we'll use players that can pull a rabbit out of a hat like Zaha or Ziyech and count on Mertens to shoot outside the box and test the keeper more than they tested Onana. But um, I would, yeah, I, I think that is how it would honestly go. We're going to, um, yeah, Ziyech or someone shooting from outside the box to find a goal. I think that's yeah. like the only way we open up that game. 
Yeah, and we really do have the skill set to do it. You know, we just have to have that belief. I think next, our next game, the one before Copenhagen, we really have to go into that game with the mindset of, okay, treat this as if it's going to be the Copenhagen game. Like, test test what you need to test. Shoot from outside the box, you know, dial in your shot so when it's next game against Copenhagen, you are ready uh, to take those shots from distance. And we saw it today, uh, yes, it was today, was ZH against Pendix Sport. We'll talk about that as well. But uh, we saw it with uh, Martens against United. I think it was Alanya Sport. I'm mixing my games now, but we're starting to see those shots from distance. So that's reassuring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and ZH is great with that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah. Ziyech scored another today. So maybe we can finally get into the pendant game. You guys have nothing else to say about the United game? No, I'm going to Copenhagen and I need a ticket. So if anyone's listening and got the connections, <laughs> hook me up. I'm desperate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's next week. So yeah, Summit, will, will, will there be a lot of fans like Bro, you it's insane. going it's insane. that don't have tickets? Yes, and that's why my worry is going up and up and up, and I don't have <laughs> 500 euros to pay, to pay for a single ticket, so... You, you can pull that 500 euros from somewhere, bro. It's just a matter of is it worth it or not for you. It's worth it, but I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Phone a friend, bro. Uh, yeah, sure. You can pay it for me, yes. <clears throat> nice. <laughs> Let's go to Pendik, shall we? Yeah. Because Pendik is super shit in terms of field, because that's where a lot of people get injured. But somehow, today, it was fine. And how did we start? Well... It was not fine. Well, but yeah. Okay. It's all right. Because <laughs> Khan got, got injured. injured. Oh, yeah? Khan, did you not see? He like pulled something on his left leg. Okay. Yeah, that's how boring the game was, honestly. Uh, Everyone was watching the draws for the Euros. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> what happened with the draws? I have I didn't catch that. Some lady was getting smashed in the background. I don't know if our, our listeners caught that. Oh, yeah? Like, that's yeah. not what I was asking. I was like, who did we draw as Turkey? But... <laughs> 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 I I just wanted to point that out. It's kind of funny. Okay, okay. Lady was getting we smashed. Drew, we 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 drew uh basically Which? the 2008 groups all over again. Don't leave but, me hanging. Uh, Tell me. Portugal and Czech Republic so far. Okay. You're going to play Ronaldo? Ah, uh, yeah. Nice. We'll That's see. A good question. Kedem versus will, Ronaldo, right? man. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. But um, yeah, no, we don't know the last one just yet. Apparently, yeah, we're going to find that after uh, the playoffs. The playoffs, which is going to be one of the following four teams, either Kazakhstan, mm-hmm. Greece, mm-hmm. Luxembourg, mm-hmm. or Georgia. Okay, just don't give yeah. me Greece. I, I think that might be fun. Yeah, true. And there's some competition there. So yeah, give us Greece. We can smash them. Just like uh, yeah. when the draw was happening. <clears throat> yeah. My company has an office in Greece with like, I want to say probably close to 100 people. Okay. So if we do match up against Greece, there's a couple of people I might have to message or on our weekly call, wear okay. like a, a Mili Tukum jersey. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right, enough, enough uh, national team stuff. We're a Galtrai podcast, so let's go to Kependix for uh, major difference in the lineup is Nelson's back. I guess he had a good talk with Okan. He said, I'm sorry, Okan, you're right. I'm nothing. You're the best. Galatasaray is the best. Please take me back in the squad. Uh, or Abdul Kerim just needed some rest. Uh, and that's why Khan Ayhan and Victor Nelson were as set- center backs. Kazim Jan did the same to Okan. He said, I'm sorry, master. Uh, please, uh, your, your dick is big. Uh, let me back and play. And Kazim Jan was on the left back. Such a boy doesn't say anything. He's just there, as always. I don't, I don't know. He's like part of the furniture now. Uh, Torreira as well. And then a difference with Sergio Oliveira after a good performance in the substitution he's in. And then we got Tete on the right. Ziesh as 10. Kerem on the left wing. And Icardi as always. Interesting stuff. 
what did you think of the lineup when you saw it? I was like, yeah, go full on uh, youth, if you ask me. Pendix Spore, who is that? I think we did too much rotation, if you ask me. Too much? Why? I mean, a little need, too much. You need to rest people. Well, okay, you need to rest people, but again, like, why not keep Z? Okay, if you're going to start with Ziesh, start with Mertens again, right? Uh, Ziesh was good, but I didn't see the same amount of, you know, play from him that he has on the right wing. Maybe he just needs to get adjusted to it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, I don't know. I don't think we needed to do this much in terms of rotation, but I heard that Oppo played with a needle last game, so I guess I can't be too upset about it. What is this but needle thing? You, do they do I this in Europe? I don't understand. I don't know, bro. <laughs> is it where illegal? Where learned this, man. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's it's weird. It, it numbs some of the pain that you have, uh, yeah. which essentially allows you to play through it. Mm -hmm. It It's not ideal because you, the pain source of the pain is not going away because you play on it. You just don't feel it. Mm -hmm. And I remember that they, they said the same thing about Icardi too, right? He played several games with Needle and they said, look, if he needs to get better, if he wants to get better, he actually needs to rest. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's why we kind of counted on the international break for that rest time period. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so Abdul Kerim resting, I totally understand that you really don't have a choice okay. if you want him to get better. What about, what about Bowie? Like, at this point, it looks like Bowie is like playing for stats. I was like, he's probably for stats. He seems he can't seem to get up. No, what I mean is like stats in terms of like I've played one hundred thousand games this season, <laughs> uh. with with an average of seven point five. Like, okay, awesome. He, I mean, I love him. Still good. You know, he's not getting those points on sofa. He's constantly getting like six and a halfs and stuff because. He do, he cannot connect with our, our attackers when he gets I, into the box. I think he's just unlucky. I think every game he has at least one very clear scoring position like he had at Pendik. If the guy didn't like touch the ball, it would have gone in. Well, there's a lot of ifs, ands, and buts, but like mm -hmm. you, you got to get some assists. <laughs> uh, the amount of times you'd be going into that box, bro. Come on. Yeah, true. But yeah, and he had Tete, right? And Tete is actually, I like him defensively. He's a work rate, like he's a workhorse. So he's doing a good job. But what I'm missing from Tebe, Tete is he's Brazilian, but there's no Samba in this guy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He looks he like have a German. Flair. Yeah, he's like a German go up and down the road and like no Samba. I don't know, man. I, I, he he's one of those players that I just didn't really f like have any hope in. I was saying I hope he you know comes through, but I'm a mm. Richardson man. What were you saying, Yasin? No, I mean I think we saw a little bit of Brazilian flair to Tete when he first came, and unfortunately it was not fine tuned, so he was losing the ball a lot. And I think Hoja said take it easy a little bit before you, you know continue to use your Brazilian flair. Maybe you need to focus on not turning the ball over as much. I'm not sure. Just kind of like a guess here. But um, I think he needs a little bit of time, honestly. Uh, he seems happy off the pitch. You know, he's he's chilling with, you know, people in his stumble. He seems happy. Um, the, there's a lot of competition in that role. I expect after year one, you know, this this year, next year, he should be noticeably better. Uh, I expect him to make that jump. In the meantime, fortunately for us, we do have options in that position. Um, and today's performance kind of gives us more reason that maybe that's why he's not a starter, right? I, I agree with you guys. I think he can be doing better in that in that position. Yeah, I think he screwed up when he didn't pass to Kerem when Kerem was oh. like wide open. So yeah. pissed. He was so pissed, Kerem. Icardi yeah. was pissed too. Icardi was shaking his head. Yeah? Oh, gee. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then he got boys. subbed out. <laughs> <laughs> like Ricardo is like, uh, what, you didn't pass to my homeboy, shaking his head. Uh, Icardi yeah. looked frustrated this game too. He yeah. was not getting any service whatsoever. I mean, he hasn't been good the past two games, honestly. That's true. That's true. I can't. I don't. Know, that I think that needle issue, that whole thing, kind of like did drop his form quite a bit. So I think we made a pretty big mistake there. I think Okan 
learn from his mistake and he's not like forcing Apo to play either. Mm -hmm. Even though this is Pendik we're talking about. Brings me to Bakambu then. Exactly. And people have been shitting unnecessarily, I think. That's what I said, bro. Bro, I said it, bro. I said you all got to give him a little bit more time. Yeah, bro, we are so season, good. Bro. People are looking for places to shit at. That's the whole thing. They're looking for scapegoats. And that can be Keram, that can be Bakambu, that can be Kazimjan. Like they're just. Well, Kazimjan doing... has been absolute trash, though. You can't. <laughs> the like, past deny few it. games, honestly. But the other yeah. 25 games that we've seen him play, he was great. So, whatever has happened up to him, Kazim like, John, I don't know. He got a girlfriend or something. Because that's usually what gives downfall <laughs> to these guys. We've seen many. I mean, come on, look at the, the opposition. Pendik Sport. We know Eren Jan. He's a Gold Strike player. We know Halil Akpunar. He was at Gustepe, right? We were going to buy him. But yeah, I see their Instagram pages full of women. So just saying, man. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Old John, but you, yeah. see, check his Instagram page. I'm telling you, it's all women. His women. Old John. Yeah. Which, Which one? Charlie. Yeah, bro. He's he's married. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> 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 all right. No girlfriends. No wives. Yeah. Stay away from females. You gotta be celibate. You hear that, Kerem? Safula. <laughs> 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 well, well then you're yeah, okay so Kerem stays away from that yeah, and he's good. been on a downfall so well, no 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 he's going up I'm telling you I, I, anyway we, we, game, we, we, it's good we gave Summit too much space here. yeah sure and then bro just do you really want to talk like, about Pendic game it has it has no relevancy there was I guess everyone to talk about, listening to, there was, there was to us to is here about. for no reason what did you say there's nothing to talk about this game. It was Sick. boring as hell. It, yeah. I don't know what we're doing. Ziyech banger. 80% of the time. Ziyech scored a banger. Good for him, man. It's mm -hmm. funny because he got subbed like right after he scored. That was pretty funny. <laughs> you know what did happen though? Okamburuk created something out of nothing out of bye. He's, Kazimjan was so bad that he used a right winger to play left back. Oh shit, of course. But that's, yeah. the, that's the thing. So we don't need the left back this game, <laughs> apparently. It doesn't matter, though. Attack-wise, he was 10 times better than um, Cosm John. Of and course he's going to be. Pendic, he's, right? he's an attacker. <laughs> okay, okay. What is Cosm John? He's a football player, right? <laughs> oh, I'm just going to sit back and do nothing, bro. I, you guys can play. I'm just going to be a present. Is that what you know? Why do we get Angelino? Because he's supposedly a good attacker, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, okay then. Well, what's your argument here? You're making no sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but it's like you make... Oh, he's an attacker. Yes, and? That's why he's better at attacking. <laughs> what the hell are you talking I, about? I, 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 uh, look, at the end of the day, we were playing against Pendix Spore, who were shit all fucking game. They they lost the ball every other time they got it. They barely attacked us. If it wasn't for Edenjan, Edenjan Yardamjid, they would be useless up top. He was the only threat there um okan buruk saw this at halftime he said it's zero zero we're not creating shit and we're also not really getting into risk defensively we might as well go all out kazim john is not playing a great game you we don't know what he's exactly doing uh let's switch to formation he put him budish there and budish played left back but not really you know was he left wing back left back or was he like a second winger left winger he Every time he got the ball, it was at half field and he just brought it up excellently, by the way. He would beat his defender with his pace and strength, put in a hard drilled ball into the midfield, uh, to the box and hope we score. So he did a great job there, but can you necessarily count on him to be a actual left back against more difficult teams like, I say, Adana Demispor? Are we going to yeah, do that against the, them? I mean, seeing how Kazim John is defending... He's letting Halil Apunar go through him every single time. And most of the positions that they at, like got close to getting has been from his side. And not to mention, he just cannot produce anything with Keram. In the second half, Barish just completely 
like destroyed their uh, right back to the point where Halil had to come back and help, you know, defend against Butters. And honestly, okay, yes, Pendik wasn't really attacking, but he did enough defensively. He held the line pretty like well along with the defenders i'm not saying this you go and use him against like copenhagen or anything but like at in the league you might have to because it's clear that you're not going to get angelino i think angelino's ggs man i don't know what you guys think but we're gonna probably find another left back mm. in uh july uh january <sighs> seems like it yeah yeah well i mean i'd be fine for anything below one million <laughs> Is six million is just too much for Angelino at this point. So, and I think Angelino's fine. He's like, all right, you guys, we're not, you know, meshing. And then mm-hmm. Ocon sees that, and I think they made a deal. Like, listen, I'm not gonna play you in the league, but I will play you in the Champions uh-huh. League, so you can kind of show yourself off. Yeah, and have some people, you know, potentially Honestly, buy you. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with Leo Dubois, even if we can get him back. Yeah, Dubois, man, I think. Again, why did we send him away? Because, like, defensively, he's okay, but attack-wise, he's, like, not it, right? Mm, I liked him. I liked him, honestly, in, in general. Overall, always good. Scored a few Who was the last good left-back we had, bro? Riera. Well, it's... Tell us. He was Tellus. also, like... Uh, Tellus, yeah, sure, of course, after him. But, yeah. No. Uh, bro. Go ahead. Almost a decade, and we still can't find a damn left back. How sad is that? Yeah. I think Nagatomo was all right, but, like, nothing to write home about. He was just solid. Uh, I loved Nagatomo as well. I don't know. Yeah. Japanese pride. I know. Love I my know. Japanese people. Shout out to y'all. Also, another info. So, we won against Pendik 2-0. This is Okan Buruk's 40th victory. And he's led the team basically to, yeah, another win in his 50th Super League game. Um, so With four, five ties and five losses yeah, in total. Exactly. 40 wins, five, five, jam. Tries, five loss. That's amazing stats. That's an amazing stat. And Hakim also after the game today said, I scored, but of course it wasn't the best performance from a personal standpoint. We struggled a bit in the first half. They had a compact structure, very defensive. Sometimes you just need to try, try from a distance, and that's how we found the second goal. So good stuff, good stuff. That makes us now leaders again ahead of Fenerbahce with one match played more. That's 37 points. Fenerbahce at 34 points, and they will play, is it Sivaspor on Monday? Sivaspor, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, and then they uh, play Besiktas after that. I'm telling you, they never do well against Simar Sivosport, even though they're like brothers. Well, Riza Ch- Chalumba is not there anymore, so uh, true that. that might change. True that, true that. So We're going to see. And, and we uh, play Adana when they play uh, Bejikar. So that, that week, a lot of things can change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, before Adana, are we, we're playing Copenhagen, right? Copenhagen is after Adana. Oh, is it? Pretty sure. Let me check. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, two weeks, right? <laughs> yeah, Adana and then Copenhagen. Oh, damn. All right. Have yeah. Four days between the two games. Can't wait. So, yeah, let's get to the predictions part. Well, I'll see myself out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Adana, um, how did they do today? They were losing last I looked. Let me see real quick. On my end, I've seen Adana play against Sivaspor and all the time, I was wondering, oh my God, is this football? Like, neither of the teams were showing anything. But then Same I was like... Same thing happened against Fenerbahce, too. I watched a little bit of that game. Yeah. Adana was terrible. Oh, yeah? So, I think we're going to smash him. I mean, I hope so. And Adana is currently fourth place, which brings them in the top rankings, right? So, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. They're in fourth, but they haven't won a game since October 28th. Uh, <laughs> they, they tied Sivas. They tied Fener. They tied Kayseri. They lost to Samsun today, 3-2, at home, like at Adana. Insane. Uh, so they're not in good form. Kind of a scary thing, too, because they're going to really want a win. And what better way to yeah. get back to winning than playing winning at Galsai in Istanbul? So 
Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be tough, but I think we'll beat them due to just quality difference. Um, no. So I, I predict a a 3-1 win. Um, I need, at some point, we need to like make big difference. So I'm going to say finally we're going to have a 4-0 win. I guess I don't, know, I don't know about that. Yeah, well, after Al- Alanya was uh, given, right? But this is going to be 4-0 <laughs> as well. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> hey, and Copenhagen. I just want that revenge, man. I hate that goalkeeper. Yeah, Grabara. me too, man. Me I'm, too. Not, I'm not going to do predictions against Copenhagen. I'm well, going there. We'll hopefully, I'll get the ticket. And hopefully, I'll see that shit face uh, fucker of a goalkeeper. Yeah, so look how privileged they are. They don't even have tickets, and they're still going to fo- go to Denmark because <laughs> they can. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. It's my uh, like da- daughter's bucks. birthday as well, so that's got to have meaning, man. Park and Stadium, my daughter's birthday. A win, getting out of the group stage. Oh, that's all I want. Baby. UEFA Cup was won there. Ah, Yeah, 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 yeah. That's... Uh, Summer, tw- when are you going? Uh, well, on the day of, so 12-12. So you'll, we're going to have another podcast next weekend, so we can always do predictions for that game then, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. <laughs> All right. So I have yeah, another man. game. Oh, you want to close it just completely skipping over. Emre? Nah, you do it. No, no, no. You the must be used to do it, it now, though. I mean, okay, sure. But but before we go. Oh, God. All right. Lads. Gentlemen. Gentlewomen, thank you. This has been episode 72 of the Lions Den. Done for you guys. Done for the community. We'd like to thank you for joining once again. If you want to reach out to us, you can find us at Lions Den GS on Twitter and Instagram. Send us whatever you want. Questions. Love for us. We take it all. We Dick take picks. it all in. No, not that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you want to join our Discord you can message us. We'll send you a invite and we'll give you the very special treatment. We give everyone the GOAT status. Yes, you can do that as well. So yeah, we look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Take care and peace out. See you all on the next one. Take care.